Hi everyone and welcome to MBA 590 Digital Marketing. Uh, today we're going to be talking about writing for the web. Uh, so we've talked about content marketing and the strategy behind it and we've talked about user experience and how to design websites very well but we haven't talked about what the content, actually the, the, the literal words on the page that you should put together are for uh, web, for web writing. So the first thing to realize is the audience is key. The audience determines the strategy, the topics, and they help organize the information. And if you take the content marketing strategy to heart, then really you need to think in depth about who the content, who the audience is, what kinds of content they're going to be attracted to, what actions you want them to take and how you can motivate the actions, and what information are they going to need uh, to feel confident about a purchase or to take the actions that you want them to take, right? Uh, and that's all driven when you think about it from the point of view of looking at every page and really analyzing that page and seeing if it appeals to the proper audience, if it's promoting the right actions, and if it's providing the information people need. A lot of people think about this from the perspective of the audience of one. You know, marketing used to be about broadcast marketing. It used to be about interrupting TV commercials, putting up billboards, things like that, that would really kind of um, reach out to a large group of individuals. The growth of digital media and uh, the stratification of digital media means that we have the ability to really tailor our conversations directly to a particular individual, right? Um, now, this doesn't literally mean focusing on one person necessarily, but the idea is that you should be constantly uh, trimming down to focus more and more on a smaller and smaller group. Um, in fact, as we've talked about in the content marketing pieces, right, you should really be thinking about identifying a persona that represents a group of individuals and write toward that particular individual. So um, how do you create a persona, right? And we, we discussed this a little bit in some of the, pre in the other discussions, but um, basically you try and write a very, very realistic description of the person that you're trying to reach out to. Uh, that profile should talk about things like the gender, the age, other demographics, psychographics, what the person believes, right? What's their stage in customer life cycle? So, you know, here with this example of Kamari, age 19, uh, from a nearby village, but lives in Madhya Pradesh, India, right? And is um, in this case, it's kind of looking at how they use technology and what kinds of uh, ways you might reach out to them uh, for um, additional technology purchases that they might be willing to make in the near future. Now, once you have that in mind, you can start to think about both the short copy, which is very quick little statements you're going to write for the web, and longer copy. And we'll talk about each of those in turn. So, so short copy, a lot of web content in, in digital content is short copy, essentially, because users have little time to consume long form information. These are things, so short copy is everything from calls to action, the titles of the web page, subject lines of the email, search ads, and, and tweets, for instance, and Facebook status updates, right? So anything uh, that isn't more than a couple of sentences is really called short copy, right? Uh, and when you think about that, that really kind of starts to set up what you might look at in the types of style, right? Short copy has to be direct and immediately give somebody what they want, right? Longer copy can develop thoughts, but you don't have time for that in short copy. So let's take an example of the calls to action, for instance. Um, users scan digital copy for clues. They don't read it left to right and straight down the page like you would a traditional book, right? They read it by scanning it to find the thing they want. Like they come to your web page with an idea about what they want to do. And you gotta make it very obvious how they can do that. So you can do that by, for instance, using active verbs, having very clear instructions. You can demarcate the instructions with space around them. You can put it in bold, you can put it in italics. Right? And you should create content for visitors at each step of the consumer buying life cycle. That content should indicate what the next step they need to take is in order to complete the action that you wanted to complete. And you should do this all while considering the context in which they're making this decision. So I have some examples, you know, quite obvious ones of what they sometimes call um, uh, chiclets, right? These little indications of different um, uh, social media platforms that you might want them to, uh, uh, to subscribe to, to join, right? In each case, right, it's very obvious what you're doing when you are clicking on each of these buttons, right? Uh, and so making that really obvious to the user is something that's very important uh, for your calls to action. So in addition to calls to action, you can start to think about titles and subject lines, right? So titles of the websites are very important, but the subject lines of emails are in some ways even more important, right? 
often both of these things are combined with longer copy to give people more introduction to what the the, the, the title or subject line is about, right? Uh, and they're a gateway to copy, right? Like if people don't like the title, if they don't like the subject line, they're not gonna stay there, right? And so you really need to write good subject lines in order to get people to click on that email or good titles to get them to stay on that website page, right? And you know, there's four kind of ways that you can do that. You can persuade them somehow, provide them with some in, uh, important piece of information. You can entice them. You can provide some content, like the classic example here is the listicles, right? The article slash list uh, type subject lines, like top 10 reasons uh, that uh, your subject line won't be clicked on, right? Um, things like that. Uh, you can inform them, right? You can provide them with information, answers to questions, or you can excite them with what the content might possibly contain, right? So think carefully about whether or not your subject lines and your titles are doing that. Search ads are also an example of short copy. Remember, we talked about this a lot in, in other talks, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. But the space and time to get the message across to the consumer is very short. Competition is high. There's a lot of other content in the page, and they have a very limited character count of what they can look over. Uh, and so as a result, you really need to make sure that that content is focused as tightly as possible, as quickly as possible, on what they're, that uh, the consumers are interested in. Of course, tweets, Facebook status updates, these are all examples of also um, uh, short copy, right? Very little content. You can sometimes add images and things like that, but not much is known there, right? Social is about conversations. So you have to require the marketers, which requires marketers to know about what the community members are interested in. If they're not, if they're not being presented with content that they're interested in, they're not going to read those social messages, right? So using things like images can provide, provoke kind of um, emotional responses that will cause people to look more depth, in depth at the social copy, right? Markers should use social not to publish or to, sorry, to, sorry, to um, promote necessarily, but to talk conversationally about what they are trying to share, right? It should be content that people would be willing to share with their friends. Um, you should avoid promotional aspects and have a communication protocol in place, as we've talked about before, to deal with any kind of negative or even positive responses to the content that you're putting up there.